Hello, this is Mike Farlow. I'm president of ComTech, and I want to give you a quick update on some changes that are going on in the insurance world in regards specifically to cyber insurance. I do quite a bit of traveling, going to tech conferences, trying to keep trying to keep up to date on on as many subjects as I can. It's a challenging task in today's uh, technical world. But one of the technical conferences that I just got back from that was in Vegas, there was a, a executive there from one of the large insurance companies and he mentioned something that was very interesting to me. He said that roughly 48% of all cyber insurance claims in the last year were denied. And that is very alarming, especially when you think of the cost of cyber insurance. If you have it and you're paying those premiums, you know it's not cheap. The last thing that you want is for it to actually be denied. And he said the reason for that is that so many people are now just clicking the boxes on the surveys that they send out and they're not actually doing the work. They're not actually putting into place the security measures that are necessary and the insurance companies are using that as a loophole to deny the claims. Loophole is probably a strong word. I mean, if they're trusting you to fill out the survey accurately and they're basing their risk assessment on it and it's not accurate, then of course the claim is going to get denied. So. It does make sense. Uh, I, I can certainly see that. So the point of this is that if you do have cyber insurance, you want to make sure that everything you've got on the survey and that the policy requirements are met. So if we can help you in any way with that, please contact us. We are happy to review your policy, talk to your agent. We can go through the survey and make sure everything is in place. And just to follow up on that a little bit more, not only are the surveys asking things now like, do you have uh, security awareness training for your staff? They're also wanting to now see the reports, the scores for those things. Are you doing phishing training? Uh, or phishing testing uh, for your staff. And just checking the box is not good enough. They want to see the scores. They want to know what the risks are before they write the insurance. So those are all things that we can help you with. We address all of those needs here at ComTech with our Cyber Armor program. And if you have any questions or would like to learn more, please let me know. And here, to finish this up, I appreciate you sticking with me, but I wanted to include a snippet of our insurance interview that we had during CyberCon. In October, we have our annual event, our live event, and one of the one of the many sessions that we had was on cyber insurance and cyber liability. So I've attached that here at the end of this video. I hope you find it useful. And again, if we can answer any questions for you at all or be of service, please let us know. We're we're here for you and I appreciate your time and watching. Have a great day. So uh, I've got with me today Steve Floyd. He's with Jennings Bryan Insurance to help me out with this next segment. And we're going to be talking about insurance, compliance, and we're going to try our best to make this interesting So and not put them to sleep. So I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> insurance is as exciting as it gets, isn't it? Yeah, I know you all are excited thrill, to hear about it. The real we'll chat. Ride for sure. <laughs> so, but I think we can keep it interesting. It shouldn't be a problem. Um, and one of the reasons I was wanting Rafe to be here, so I'm going to have to fill in for him, is Rafe is our compliance officer at ComTech. And so he looks after uh, our HIPAA compliance, things like that. And and cyber insurance and HIPAA, they all kind of roll in together. There's there's a lot of, uh, a lot of overlap there. Um, and really to kick this off, cyber insurance is really there because you're assessing a business risk and 
risk is different for everybody. These days, it can be the risk of competition. It can be a risk of, you know, I can't get good staff. I'm having supply chain issues. Likely, that's a problem. Um, but the big one right now uh, th that I see is is that's hitting hitting us is the cyber insurance and the way prices are going up. I know mine, even though we've had no incidents in 30 years, and we are as protected as I can imagine you can possibly be. We have every safeguard out there. Uh, my insurance still doubled uh, from, year, from one year to the next. I don't know if you guys are experiencing the same thing, but it's steep. And that's not a fun expense. I mean, I hate to say it, you're not the bad guy by any means, but that's, uh, I'd much rather invest that money somewhere else in my company. Uh, but it's, a, it's something that's necessary. You've got to have it these days. Uh, and a lot of times I run into folks that actually don't have any cyber insurance. And that's something that can be a little scary because they think that their general insurance covers cyber. And that's the first question I'd like to pose to you, Steve, is doesn't my, doesn't my general liability, doesn't that cover cyber? Because that's what well, I hear a lot. It's funny you would ask. No. Uh, and thank you for saying that insurance is not a bad thing to have. We're not bad people. <laughs> insurance companies are not bad. You know, you know when you need us. Well, you know, you see it on TV all the time. They're talked about. I worked for the co for company side for 28 years before I came to the agency side about 15 years ago. Uh, I know what these folks have to go through. Uh, cyber insurance is 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 a new territory for insurance companies. It is moving so so fast. You know, the first you know, the introductions that you all did earlier. You know, I sat there going, "This is coming." but it's going to bring some things with it that will have to be addressed. Insurance companies are trying to catch up. There is just so much activity with cyber insurance. General liability doesn't c cover cyber insurance. Most of you have property coverage and you have general liability, workers' comp, automobile, all those wonderful things that you need to have to, to build a, a fence around your operations. Things come about in business that you know, that are hard to anticipate. Uh, your general liability insurance is going to cover, you know, property damage. Should you do damage to somebody's property while doing work for them, uh, it will cover the bodily injury. Should somebody get hurt doing that or on your premises, or a myriad of different things, you know, the products that you put out there and, and, and sell for your your customers, you know, that's that's those are all coverages. But insurance is just like. You know, and I hate to use an analogy like, because I've become a car salesman, but it's, it's kind of like you go out and buy a car. You can buy a car that has basic stuff, and then you can start adding other stuff to it. And that's really where we are, where we are with cyber liability. Years ago, we had a, about 10, 15, 12 years ago, I think it was, employment practices liability started. Start, we started seeing that in California, and it started moving itself across the country where you know an employee could actually go out and go against their employer if they felt like they were mistreated you know they didn't get the promotion they were let go or maybe they didn't even get hired you know and, and the attorneys learned how to deal with that and it became a big deal cyber liability is extremely much like that and it's been over the last 10 years companies started talking about it about 10 years ago and started coming out with forms to address it and protect a, a business, but yet were they really aware of all the things that go into uh, a computer system? And it's become very, very difficult. They have to hire ex experts to take care of that, to understand it, and then when there is a loss, they gotta have somebody that has an understanding that goes about you know, handling a situation. Uh, if you have a property loss, your house catches fire or a building catches fire, most companies have adjusters that are going to run out there. They have a lot of experience in that. They've, they've been through it before. A lot of them are actually fire inspectors that, that have worked for fire departments across the country. So they'll come in. They know exactly what to look for. Cyber insurance is a lot different because these hackers, these people who are out there trying to gain access to your systems, 
are extremely intelligent and they have and time's on their side uh, you, you, we were talking a couple weeks ago and you mentioned that there was a company that, that suffered a cyber incident and the company sat there who the hacker sat there for four four years before they showed up not, and, not quite that long but it was quite, it was it was over 90 days well for 90 days but but they yeah. can sit there for a number of years if I've seen some things yeah. and just watch what's going on on your system you know, that's a little bit discerning to me that there's somebody out there watching what I'm doing on my system and, and they're doing the same thing to you and uh, you have a lot of information on your system and how do you protect it yeah that's true uh, in your binder we've actually got a I've got a blog article that talks a little bit about uh, the need for cyber insurance and one of the things that you may not think about is even if you have cyber insurance is that it may not actually pay when the time comes we got a little bit of a hum is there something we can do on this end to help with that oh there you go perfect thank you <laughs> i don't know if y'all could hear it but with these speakers we, we were getting it up here um but basically it comes down to doing your due diligence if you're not taking the necessary steps to protect yourself, protect your business, protect your private information. And that private information could be something as simple as your employees security numbers. If you're not doing those things, and then there's a chance that your insurance policy may not pay, I would assume. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, if you're a bank and you've got insurance, but you don't lock any of your doors and you leave the vault open, uh, you know, uh, Give me the address. Yeah, uh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's just you know, it seems simple, but it's not really. It's you know, software is out there. We all use it, and there are updates to come about for software. We get really busy running our businesses, and sometimes we fail to you know do the due diligence that we should to protect our operations or to protect the people who are within our operations or the people that we are working with, our clients. Uh, that, you know, the simple thing of, of, of <laughs> I love it when I get my notices to change my password. Uh, it's, it, it drives me nuts. But I understand the necessity of it, and I understand the necessity of it being a certain number of characters and th this and that and the other. I, it, it, it's, it's required, and it needs to be. Uh, when you go out and get cyber insurance, they're going to ask those type of questions. Are you updating these things? Are you changing passwords? You know, what's your plan should something take place? If you have an actual cyber attack or a data breach, what are you going to do about it? Uh, they want to know what you're doing before they, uh, you know, issue insurance. Cyber insurance is no different than anything else. You know, it comes with a, a list of questions. And you know they have to be answered in a certain way, and, and they have to be honest answers. And so there's a lot of information that's, that's needed so that the company can determine: Are you a good risk, or are you not a good risk? How much are you going to pay? You know, you said yours doubled, and I can't imagine that you, there's anything you haven't done to protect your operations. All of you have information on your system. You got names, addresses, phone numbers driver's license numbers, social security numbers, and you got that for your employees. But what about your clients that you work with? You've got some of their information out there that's valuable. Uh, if you have health insurance, you even open the door even more. It's, you know, the crack becomes wider and wider for a hacker to gain access to your system. Yeah, very true. I think you read my notes because that was my next question in here is, um, uh, I hear a lot of folks say, well, I'm not really a target. Uh, you know, why do I need cyber insurance? And is there anyone here that doesn't keep private information like all the things you just mentioned on hand? Yes, we all do. That information is there. Yes, we may not have the, you know, secret formula to Coke. We may not have something like that. But all of us have data that if it got out would be a really big problem. Um, I mean, just imagine if you did get hacked, 
and you and forensics clearly showed that all of your payroll files got got stolen. Well, I don't want to have that conversation with my employees that uh, that hey, all, all your social security number, birth date, everything else is out on the dark web for sale. Uh, that's a bad bad day, and. We need to take precautions that that doesn't happen, but just like you buy fire insurance for your home, you don't want to fire for it, but you darn well want to be protected because the risk is there and it could happen. And that's what the, that's what the cyber insurance is for. Well, exactly. It's there to, to protect you and it's protect also your clients. You know, if you're out there, you know, going back and forth, you know, with companies, and I do that a lot, you know, I send emails out to them and, and, and all that. And I think I saw a thing, and you probably know better than I do, Mike, that I think 91% of the cyber attacks, data breaches happen because of emails. And it's just you know, it's become so easy for us today to do that. And hackers know that, and that's what they're watching for. Uh, you know, we have a responsibility to the people that we do business with, that you do business with, that, you know, if I send you something, it's clean. Uh, should something go out from my system, I'm responsible for your system should it go down. Do you have insurance that's going to cover that? That's what cyber liability can do. It's a third party situation that it can be offered. And uh, it's just in cyber insurance, you can build it to do different things. And it's not always just hackers either, if you think about it. I mean, in, uh, not just hackers. in. Penetrating your system is what I'm what I'm saying. It can also be things like phishing attacks. There's so many out there right now that are going on that are tricking your staff and your employees and sometimes the business owners into sending money that they shouldn't or they're intercepting ACH transactions, numbers like that. So they may not have actually broken through your defenses, but your employees can give out information or transmit money that they shouldn't. And those are things the the term for it's business email compromise is one that's thrown around a lot. But I've seen lots of money lost through those types of things and put you out of business kind of money. There was one company that they they were actually buying a as a real example in Alamance County that was actually buying a piece of heavy equipment. They were a contractor and the conversation going back and forth between them and the seller of, I think it was a bulldozer, and it was going back and forth through email, and they agreed on the price. They said, okay, send us the ACH information. Everything was legit. They didn't know that their email had been hacked, and the hacker was watching it and actually changed the ACH number midstream of the communication $330,000 wired to China. Banks don't cover that. You no, sent no. it willingly. They fulfilled your request. Don't think the banks are going to cover that. They're not responsible. No, that your, your, your cyber liability is where you're going to find the coverage for that. Uh, I have a client had a very similar situation. It has a large internet uh, profile sells a lot of a lot of uh, different equipment and that's exactly what took place with them during that transaction the numbers got switched and their money went that way product didn't you know it's there it just didn't get paid for it mm -hmm. yeah you you might get lucky and recover but maybe maybe yeah there's no guarantees there um well with everything that we just said why did my rate increase so much <laughs> well I guess you know they just like you a lot. Uh, <laughs> they like a lot of us a lot. I'll yeah. bet. How, how many people did get rate increases this last year? So yeah, a lot yeah. of hands. Yeah, of it's, hands. it's 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 you know it's a fast moving uh, exposure for companies. You know, like I said before, you know they're out there trying to figure out what's happened in the past, what might happen in in the future. How are we going to you know a company? And let's face it, insurance companies are just like the rest of us, or a lot of us. They're out there to make money, you know, and, and we can throw stones at that all we want. But they're also they're giving you a contract based on what you tell them you, you're about. And so, therefore, they're going to try to figure out how can I make money with this particular company or this particular type of risk. And so 
they run all those numbers. You know, they look at you know what 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 do you what are you bringing in revenue a, a, a year? You know, what is how many people do you do business with uh, that might have a, a, a tipping point that cause an issue? Uh, what kind of deductible do you want? What kind of limits do you want? You can get limits, you know, for a half a million to ten million. It, it depends on what you want. So all those things come into play, and the company will do the best it can. But it, it you know, it's looking towards the future. The company's got to make money. You know, if it starts losing money and, and, and they've had some issues, uh, I think in 2020 uh, attacks, uh, a ransomware attacks, I think went up 150 percent. That's a lot. You know, the average cost of that is over 200 grand. Yeah, so it's over 200 grand for an, an instance to take place. So for, you know, I say a small amount of money, you know, for the companies that, that, that we insure and look at, you know, I can, I can think premiums, you know, were like $700, you know, based on a million dollars worth of, you know, re revenue. Those were the days. Ten million dollars, you know, it goes up significantly. Depends on your deductible, like I said, and uh, those type of things. But companies have to make a profit, and if there's a lot of incidents of cyber liability, which there are, because we see them each and every day, you hear them on the news. They're going to adjust pricing accordingly. The exposure is there. Yeah, and. Uh, it's not just the ones on the news. We're in the midst of it, of course, because cybersecurity is our business, and we support mm -hmm. hundreds of companies. We see it almost daily. It's amazing. So if you haven't been hit yet, it's just a matter of time. time. It's out there. They're everywhere. And, and as devious as you can imagine, and we're actually going to talk about that a little bit later. Um, is there anything we can do to help reduce our premium? or to not be as big of a risk. Oh, yeah, just go ahead and increase your deductible to something you can't afford. No. Uh, <laughs> the only best way to do it is what we've talked about earlier is, you know, your, your software. It has to be kept up to date. You know, if there's some adjustments that need to be made or some improvements that need to be made, you need to do it. There's a cost to that. I get it. But at the same time, it's a, safe, it's a safety for you. Changing of passwords, it's necessary. You know, you have to keep them up to date. Everybody's out there watching. It's all about those type of things. Uh, get an expert like Comtech. You know, they're sitting here. They know everything there is to know about co the computer world. You know, I'm an insurance agent. I'll help you with the insurance. They're going to help you with what's really important to run your business and keep your business safe when it's out there. And one of the things that I've noticed uh, along that same regard is that does everybody remember the surveys that you used to get a couple, three years ago from about cyber insurance that had like six questions on it? Very, very simple. Well, now it's a multi-page document no, it's, it's and long. with language in it that most people barely understand. They're getting, they're asking so much more because they're doing these risk assessments and they want to know, sometimes they want to know or they specify, you must be using this particular piece of software or this particular antivirus in order to qualify for the insurance or so your renewal will be processed. And those things are complicated. Get us, we're here, we can help you fill them out. We do it every week. We get at least one a week that we're helping to fill out for clients because they don't know the answers. And the danger is if you answer it incorrectly and they judge your risk level based on your survey and you said, yes, I have Sentinel-1 installed in a SOC monitoring my network and you really don't, that's pretty that, much an that, incident that, rejection. That's a pretty claim, fast it? incident. Yeah, it's going to get you, can uh, well, not going to get you canceled until the renewal comes up, but it's going to probably get your claim denied. It's just, you know, honesty is tough. I mean, like I said, those, those applications are extremely difficult. I can't answer some of those questions. I have to go to someone like Comtech and get some help. Say, what, tell me what this is saying. All you, you, you computer folks have all these different little initials and things, and I don't get them. I'm sorry. But, you know, I'm learning. And, uh, but that's, that's where Comtech can, you know, step in and help because the applications are long. They used to have six questions as it's gotten more difficult and we're seeing more cyber attacks and data breaches, sure. there's just more information needed.
HIPAA compliance checklist. And there's a, I know a lot of you in here are in the medical field and you're hopefully are all HIPAA compliant and you go through the different procedures and such. But HIPAA compliance is complicated. It's a lot more difficult than most people think. And if you're not working with a coach, basically, to get it done, then you may not be compliant. One real easy thing, I'll just zoom in on it here. Perhaps. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, for example, for all of you, how did you do on your high-tech subtitle D privacy audit last year? Last time you submitted all your paperwork. Do you even know what that is? I didn't. I didn't have a clue. That's why we have a compliance officer and we work with a compliance group to get that done. There are six required annual audits for HIPAA compliance. If you don't do them, if you fail on any of these to not have them, you're not HIPAA compliant. So that could be an issue. And it can become a really big issue. Again, the clicker is a little slow here. Uh, if you don't keep those records for at least six years, that's one thing they're gonna look at if you get hacked. And this is the HIPAA wall of shame that is actually federal website and you can go to it and you can take a look. I know this is an eye chart, so don't worry about trying to read it here, but I wanted to show you that these, that breaches, HIPAA problems are local, they are happening, and it's something we need to be aware of. The companies that are on here, I'm not pointing them out to say anything bad. This is public information. It's up on, I said they call it the wall of shame for a reason. But these companies were hacked, and these are companies that you know. There's Emerge Ortho, that's locally. I pulled it up for North Carolina and picked the local companies. This was last month, August 25th. 68,000 health records compromised at Emerge. There was two others on here. Again, the clicker seems to be a little slow. Uh, OE Enterprises, well-known company here in uh, Alamance County. There's a little smaller, 4,000 records in the spring. Here's a big one, Novant Health. Uh, 1.3 million records stolen last month. This is important stuff because these, these incidents also can come with fines. So you've got to make sure that your security is in place and your HIPAA compliance is in place and you're following all the rules or you can get in some serious trouble. Per incident on these things, they range anywhere from $100 per incident, which isn't too bad, but it still hurt, to $50,000 per incident. So you can do the math, it's a lot of money and you don't wanna get caught up in that. The one thing I didn't ask you, and I'm blindsiding you, so I apologize and I don't know the answer to this at all. If you do get hit with something like that with a HIPAA fine, does cyber insurance cover HIPAA fines? Be honest with you, Mike. I'm not sure about if they'll cover HIPAA fine, but it will cover fines. Yes, you can have that through your policy. They take care of that. Uh, but like anything else, there's a limit that'll be put out there. Okay. Okay. Sorry, didn't mean to blindside you with it, but it just occurred to me because I wasn't wasn't sure. So again, if you're in a HIPAA compliant industry and you're not sure in any way about this, contact us. Let us know. That is one of the services that we offer. We partnered with uh, the compliancy group, which takes care of that. And uh, just as a side note, as we wrap this segment up, uh, even if you're not in healthcare, the interesting thing is you might still be under HIPAA compliance and you don't know it. Uh, and that's the, that's the really scary part is you think, well, that's, that doesn't apply to me. And then you get a HIPAA fine. Uh, for example, and I am not the HIPAA guy, so that's one reason I want to rape up here. So please I apologize if anything I say is incorrect. But as I understand it, if you are, for example, a CPA that does work for healthcare, you fall under HIPAA. So, and there's a lot of other categories as well that falls under it that you wouldn't think would fall under it. 
So you want to make sure you protect yourself and look into it. It doesn't cost anything to get a free analysis and, and just find out where you stand.